Hi, I'm Andrew, and I teach, learn, and coach in the field of modern languages. In this short series of videos, we're going to analyze how you can learn any language quickly and efficiently. So welcome to Communicative English. Welcome to my classroom, which is actually my kitchen, until I can move to a different country or go on holiday and record some real live language lessons, which I hope to do this year. Use this channel and myself with a short series of language videos about language learning. Then we'll get into some videos concerning English or Spanish. And if you have any suggestions for content, please leave a comment in the comment section below. So, how to learn a language? Well, that's a really loaded question. There are many answers. Some people need to learn a language as they move into a new country. Some need to do it because of their job. Some, well, for tourism. Others, for personal development. Others, because of a new relationship. There are hundreds of reasons, perhaps, to learn a new language. But whatever the answer is, or whatever your reason is, you need to ask yourself a question you need to break things down. If I said to you, I want to learn Italian, then that's too vague. So let's look into this. The first part of this is really that you don't need to learn a language. You can acquire one. These days, with bespoke language learning opportunities, such as the courses I offer, and a wealth of information available online, you don't need to sit down and learn verb tables or vocabulary lists. However, information overload, as I mentioned in the first video, is very, very real, and you must be smart. So, what is language acquisition? Well, it's not sitting at home, or in a classroom, studying grammar rules and lists of vocabulary. It's not how traditional language teaching is presented. Traditional language teaching is known as explicit teaching. Explicit teaching involves the learner giving explanation, sorry, involves the teacher <laughs> giving explanations to learners about how something works. This may be something that you saw in school or perhaps when you learned a language later in life. This can, but this can relate to sound systems, grammar, or sentence structure, for example. There's normally some practice here, but the key word here is how. Learners are learning about verbs, nouns, adjectives, clauses, conditional structures, and so on. They're learning about the language, not necessarily learning how to speak the language. And I'm sure, as I said, this method is familiar to you from your school days. As opposed to explicit teaching, acquisition uses something called implicit teaching. This is where the learners are learning, but they're not necessarily sure about what they're learning. There's no specific instruction, but there is practice. To give you context, in the classroom, I could teach the grammar surrounding the future tenses, for example. That would be explicit teaching. Alternatively, I could ask my students what they are going to do at the weekend and they can tell me. That's implicit teaching. To acquire a language, you need to use implicit teaching. You need to be speaking the language from day one. And the analogy I like to use to explain this is as follows. If you want to learn to swim, you don't read an instruction book. You get in the water, the pool, the river, the sea, and you learn, you do it. And it's the same with a language. You can refer to the instruction book at a later date to ensure you're doing the activity correctly, be it swimming or speaking the language. Also, you can have clear objectives when you start or continue to learn a language. When I'm coaching language learners, I use SMART objectives. This has come from the world of business, from project management specifically, and SMART stands for, it's an acronym, it stands for specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time bound. So let's go back to my example of I want to learn Italian, which is really vague. So I would say, 
I need to learn Italian for tourists. That's specific. I need to know Italian for hotels, restaurants, car hire, asking directions, buying food and complaining. Those things are measurable and relevant. I have eight months to do this. This is attainable, it can be done, and it's time bound, I have a deadline. This gives me a clearly defined goal to find a co course, coach, or language teacher relevant to my requirements. A course which contains the content I need, a course which can be completed in a relevant time frame. All in all, I need an Italian course for tourists which meets my requirements and could be taken in the eight months I have before I travel to Italy. Extrinsic and intrinsic. Okay, two perhaps new words, but when I'm teaching at work, teaching coll colleagues often ask me, how can I motivate my students? The answer is, using traditional teaching methods, you can't. Intrinsic means from within. Extrinsic means from external influences. Motivation has to be intrinsic. It has to come from within. Now, also, when you're learning, you need to specify goals. Otherwise, how are you going to succeed? When learning a language, your goal should not be, I'm going to learn language X, like I'm going to learn Italian. You cannot learn language X. You need to break your goals down into manageable chunks. Alternatively, you need to decide what the purpose of your learning is. Are you learning in order to get the most out of travel? Do you need this language for your work? Is it because you're going to go and study and live in a different country? Even with these goals in mind, the overall objective needs to be broken down. A professional language teacher, or more specifically a professional language coach such as my help, myself, will help with this. As will these videos, I think. Also, I have a book written about this. I'll leave the links to, this, to that in the description below. If you don't have any clear objectives, you can't make a clear plan. This is what we would call willful blindness. Have a vision, which all things considered will work and be achievable. Once you've set your overall objectives, it becomes a question of chipping away at achieving them. This is where micro routines come into effect. When I plan and started writing this video course or the books connected to it, as with the novels I've authored, the completion of writing was the objective. There's no book fairy or video elf which brings these publications to life within my computer. The, the publications and the scripts for these videos don't write themselves. I needed clear objectives and micro routines. In order to achieve this, I set a completion date. I put the completion date in my calendar. I then add micro routines, which are scheduled events in my calendar, which are non-negotiable, which were dedicated to research and writing time. I had to manage this like any other working day. After all, the main purpose of these videos is to help others. But let's be clear, I also probably want to make some money in the process. <laughs> so. How much do I want to make? How many hours of research do I have to do? How many hours of recording? This is a simple division calculation that told me if I missed an hour's writing, I could miss out on X amount of money. That kind of motivates me. It focuses the mind. Also, I don't make the schedule unrealistic. I use the SMART model. I didn't want to have a punishing routine because if it's punishing, by definition, I would not enjoy the process. I'm a very conscientious person and somewhat of a perfectionist, so the research and the presentation has to be useful and valid. Some people say that perfection is paralysis. Indeed, this is a mantra I use when speaking other languages, indeed when recording videos and writing books, so I don't want to dwell on superfluous research or present spurious writing or anecdotes. I don't want to make a prison for myself by employing an overbearing schedule. The idea was at the end of each research, writing or recording session, the ideas contained would be in a better position than before. I didn't want to tyrannize myself. So that's a process of objective setting I use. I also use it with language learning. So why do I mention that? Well, you can use this to motivate yourself. 
uh, to learn what you need to learn about the language you wish to learn. Your objective must be truthful. I asked before, what do you need language X to do for you? You'll never learn 100% of your own language, let alone another one. Then we break this objective down into manageable chunks. So smart objectives, well, they're normally used as a business tool for setting objectives in project management or professional development. And this methodology is really applicable to language learning. As we'll discover, the answer to the question, why learn a language, lies within. Your motivations or reasons are very different to those of another person. And that's how I treat my students. Everybody is an individual. And by using SMART, you can target your learning. Also, you need to break the task of language learning down into chunks. If you decide, I want to learn Italian, then to what level? Is it for fluency or tourism, conversation or academic? To learn a language to fluency takes years, believe me. Furthermore, what is fluency? People communicate in different contexts, use language for different reasons. So by using SMART objectives, you can reach different levels of fluency according to your specific requirements. You can reach your own personal fluency. Perhaps you need to learn a language to give business presentations and to give meetings. So you don't really need to learn about hotel reservations or restaurants, for example. You go for your personal fluency. In short, you need to create a language learning plan. You can use the help of a language learning consultant or coach such as myself, or you can set your own goals and objectives. Are you going to dedicate a couple of hours a week and work through some textbook resources that you found online? Or are you going to create a plan outlining what you want to achieve within a certain time frame? Well, the answer is obvious. Language learning, it takes time and effort. It also needs dedication. You can't go from living a sedentary lifestyle, sitting watching TV all day, to running a marathon without some training, coaching and a plan. Same with the language. So setting incremental SMART goals. You can control your development and focus on what's necessary for your language skills. So what about how I learned Spanish? Well, first of all, years ago, when I left the UK, I wanted to live in France because there wasn't much of a language barrier. Um, it was in the middle of the house pricing collapse. The UK government, amongst many others, decided austerity was the way forward. And which budget did they cut first? <laughs> Education. I lost three jobs within a year. So I sold the house, bought a caravan, and went off to France looking for English teaching work. There was no language barrier for me, although I hadn't spoken French in a long time. And there were new words to learn, such as Louis-Fi. But these are mostly sort of technology-related words. And when I studied French in the 90s, these words didn't really exist. But after a couple of weeks, I'd regained my French and went job hunting and house hunting in the Auvergne area. But it was the end of August and autumn had begun. It was very cold. We were living in a caravan and we thought, we can't do this. It's too cold. Why live in an even colder place in the UK? So with the caravan and two-year-old daughter in tow, we hightailed it down to Catalonia in Spain. So the weather was much more agreeable and within a week I was offered work. Off the books, you know, no contract, seven euros an hour, cash in hand, a pittance. So I rejected that offer and we moved south to the province of Valencia. And the climate and the people were wonderful and we decided to stay in Spain. Then I realised that I needed to learn Spanish immediately to avoid the pittance available as a black market teacher. So I did. I thought back to my grandfather and how he learned languages and applied his techniques. But smart goals first. I needed Spanish to socialise. I needed friends. I needed contacts. So I paid 500 euro a month for my daughter to attend a private school, which was located conveniently at the end of a road, which was a great investment. Within six months, she was as fluent as the other kids. And we bought children's books and I would read to her at night when she went to bed and we were both learning. Then after my daughter was asleep, I would join my landlord, neighbour and friend, Antonio, and go to the bar. Now I used to come home a few hours later and my head was always throbbing, not from alcohol consumption, but from linguistic immersion. We were a circle of four friends, plus the owner of the bar. I would hear Antonio use a phrase, 
remember it, and then use the same phrase with Paco, Martin or Julio. They would correct my clumsy use of Spanish. I learned how to talk in the present, a simple future and a perfect tense for the past. I could now describe, basically, present, past and future actions in a basic way. It was quite amazing. I learned some good colloquial language, how to describe the weather from the incessant blaring of the TVs. I learned how to order food, how to complain, how to describe other various day-to-day -day necessities. In the supermarket, I would read product descriptions and once home, read the ingredients and cooking instructions. These were part of my initial goals, to socialize and not have problems buying food. After the supermarket came the weekly market. This was actually an easy task and resulted in better produce, a lower price and greater self-esteem. My initial goal of integration and the ability to function in Spanish on a day-to-day -day basis had been achieved and it felt great. So the housing development we lived on after we'd moved to Valencia had a sports and social club. So after losing Antonio and other friends in the first place we lived in, I went out and made new friends, as did my partner. It was nice to see. She became friends with a Belgian lady who was married to a Spaniard. She spoke Spanish, French, German, and crucially English. It was a great introduction to Spanish culture from a then partner, um, who was beginning to come a little bit disillusioned because she wasn't learning the language quickly because I was going out and doing it. So it turned out that my partner needed regular um, doctor and hospital appointments. So, how do we communicate with these people? Another smart goal. Social life continued. Work didn't. I wasn't working at that point. But I needed to learn how to pass a job interview in Spanish. So, another smart goal. And I studied all of the language related to employment. And I'd previously worked in training and HR. I'd been sent on interview skills courses. So, this element of self-study was quite easy. In the end, I got two jobs. One teaching business English in multinational corporations, the other teaching English to kids and exam preparation in a small local academy. Enough money to live on. At that time, the average salary in Spain was about €1,000 a month. I was getting about 1500 between the two jobs. And incidentally, both of the job interviews were conducted in English. <laughs> but I soon got my own private classes. The best one was with a regional human resource director of an international supermarket chain. One-to-one -one classes weekly in his office. The guy was a star and we remained in contact for a very long time. He gave me a springboard, a seedling of an idea. I started my own business. He would recommend it and provide feedback because as far as he was concerned, I was the best teacher since sliced bread. So I spoke to my partner. We looked for a premises and along came another smart objective, Spanish for real estates and accountants. This time, after the move, our daughter was enrolled in state school and the local private schools were focused on English and I thought, well, what's the point in paying for her to learn the language we speak at home, yeah? But the difference was, in addition to a fledgling Spanish, she now had to learn Valencian. So my targeted Spanish was going well enough. At that point, I'd say a low B1 with Spanish for additional purposes. So I learned how to deal with real estate agents and accountants, found suitable premises and opened a business. All of this in a new language and a new business within two years, new social lives and a great standard of living just before my 35th birthday. I actually signed the, uh, the lease date on my birthday. It was a wonderful time. So the next smart goal, Spanish for marketing. I managed that. At that point, I began teaching in the school and soon realized that I couldn't translate a lot of the material for the intermediate level courses. Now, I don't recommend translating in a language class, but back then it was the thing to do. But the next smart goal, translate the B1 level courses, the B2 level courses, to be honest, into English. So I didn't have to use a dictionary in the classroom to explain vocabulary. The second year, yep, you got it. Another smart goal to understand all of the C1 courses. So. Prior to launching this, I'd set and attained my goal of being able to move between English and Spanish at this level. I only studied the vocabulary at this point. I didn't bother with grammar study for quite some time, and I'll talk about that later. As I say, for those of you who are students or teachers, the native language should seldom be used in the classroom. But at that time it was, and after five years or so in the country, all the material was accessible. I could understand it and relate to it. More importantly, so could my students. 
After the first year of the business, I had about 40 students or so. No profit or return on investment. The second year, it moved up to about 100 students. And my partner had been coached into teaching English to children and infants. And in the third year, we were about 120 students plus a lucrative business English contract in a local multinational. I was in there from 7 a.m. until 8.30 in the morning, plus three evenings a week. And the academy, I was in there till 10 o'clock at night. I had to recruit. So I employed another teacher. So back to the accountant and the tax office and more smart learning. In the end, there was myself, my partner, a receptionist and two other employees, plus a babysitter, all employed on the back of our successful business, which had, you know, I'd done it in Spanish. It's quite a wealth generator. I was also studying for a master's degree in applied linguistics and language teaching at this time. And then I received the offer to work as a language teaching consultant for an extremely prestigious university. So I took them up on it. I left the academy to my then partner and I went off to work for the university. Um, while I was teaching te um, teenagers in the academy, the next smart goal was to learn colloquialisms, swearing and cultural references. This was quite easy. And at the time, everyone was watching a certain TV program called La Quesia Vecina. And a lot of this swearing and colloquial and cultural references were used by the teenagers in the classroom. So by learning it from a TV series, I could stamp out bad language in the classroom. And it was at this point we received the unfortunate news that Antonio, my first real Spanish friend, my introduction to real Spanish language had died. He was only in his early 50s and had succumbed to a sudden heart attack. I'll always remember him, socialising with him, and I helped him with his work a couple of times when he had British clients. He'd invented a motorised gate which you could operate by SMS messages from your mobile because this was before smartphones. And his workshop was across the road on a plot of land. He ended up living there when his marriage broke down but he was a great friend and I'm proud to have known him. So that's all for today but as I've said these videos draw upon years of research and experience. So if you'd like to know more then I'll link to my books in the description. If you'd like me to help you with English or Spanish, then I'll link to my website and Facebook. If you enjoyed the video, then please hit like. You can also subscribe and hit the bell notification icon so you get notified when I upload more content. Also, if you really like the video, then why not PayPal me or buy me a coffee? The links are in description. See you next time. Hasta la próxima.